Hello, and welcome to Susan Bird Artwork. I'm Sue Gilbert, your host, and this is Susan Bird, my partner, my muse, and my spirit guide. Together we have an art brand designed to spread joy and whimsy in the world. And we talk about different things in our videos. Today, I'd like to bring up the subject of the observer, otherwise known as who's watching. Who's watching? So the observer is used in paintings often to lend importance to a situation. You know, if you see a, a painting of a parade or a triumphal march, it wouldn't be any good if no one was watching. So the painter puts in the observer. And uh, another instance of the observer that I find very unique are deathbed paintings. This was painted in 1823 by Matthias van Brie. And this is portraying the death of Peter Paul Rubens. So if you look closely at this, you'll see lots and lots of observers. For the purposes of this video, I would call this a way to use the active observer in a piece because the, the observers are all, they're observing, yes, but they're also very participatory. If you look at their expressions and you look at their gestures, they're not just sitting back. They're really a dynamic part of the piece. Now, another way of using the observer is to have the observer be more passive. So here's an example by Rubens called John the Baptist Preaching. And this was painted in 1505. By the way, I will put the notes in the bottom so you can track me if you're interested in looking these paintings up. In any case, here we have St. John on the right preaching and we have a lot of observers. What's curious to me about this is you ask yourself, are these active observers or passive observers? You know, who's watching? Or in this case, who's not watching? If you take a line and divide this painting in half, you'll see on the right-hand side some passive observers. They're sitting down, they're absorbing John's words, they're taking it all in, and it's a very sweet pastoral scene. But if you look at the other side, you'll notice a lot going on in the background. These people aren't observing the main action at all. There's a little crosstalk. There's a tall statuesque man looking at the action what little action there is, and a couple of horsemen in the back that really aren't big enough to be important. So I found this example to be quite curious. Why would you have a group of people raptly listening and another group who could sort of care less, carrying on a cross conversation? What might Rubens be telling us? I have no idea, but it's interesting to speculate. Okay, so moving on, I myself did a piece, and this was an allegory. And this is a case where Susan and I both decided on using observers to augment the situation and to create a sense of importance. So here is a light goose. A large white goose is being attacked by a knight. In the background are lots and lots of observers. And characteristic of Susan and I, they're not delineated. They're just shapes, but they convey a sense of perhaps the forest watching or spirits watching. We're not quite sure, but there is a feeling that, that this is a momentous occasion because there are so many observers. Even the trees are watching. Another way artists use the observer is to utilize animals in the painting. This was painted in 1909 by an artist called Philip R. Goodwin. And what I love here is the use of the two horses as passive observers. Here's another example by my favorite illustrator and artist, Dr. Seuss. This is from the book, Bartholomew and the Ublek. And here we see Bartholomew has raced up to let the captain know that the Ublek is dangerous and he's trying to warn him. But what's so interesting is that little dog in the background, the little dog and his ears perked that lets us know that indeed this is an occasion. This is something big that's happening here. And the dog conveys a sense of alarm to me. So I think this is a really effective use of an animal to augment the situation, to increase its dramatic capabilities. So here's a piece where Susan and I used an animal as an observer. Look at the little bird on the horns there. 
that little bird is kind of telling you by its cheerfulness that there's nothing dangerous about the beast whatsoever. So what would be the point of adding an observer to an otherwise busy scene? Here's an example to show you. This is our piece called Giggle Fit. And as you can see, the clouds are rolling around in the sky, having a perfectly good laughing fit. And over in the corner is an observer. Now, if you take the observer out, you still have a really interesting piece. You have a lot of dynamic action, you have color, but what happens when we put the observer in? Now we're adding a different flavor, some contrast, a different element. We're making it much more interesting. So let's take this a little deeper and let's think about where in our lives are we observers and where are we participants? and you read the news or you watch the news, and you can get all riled up. You can be a very active observer in your emotional response. And, and maybe you write letters, maybe you get activated, maybe you go volunteer, or you could be a passive observer and you could sit back and just put a little boundary between you and it, even though it may be disturbing. You are not going to participate in it. You let it sink in and then you move on. So I think those are valid examples of, of how the observer works in our own lives. Actually, my preference is not to focus on anything dire happening in my life or around my life or in the world. I would much rather dream. I love to dream about rainbows. I love flying machines. I love architecture, especially architecture with turrets. And I love plenty and plenty of countryside. So in closing, I'd like to show you this final piece, which we just did a couple of years ago. And it's called Where We Are. This is the way it was before we added observers. It looks like they're kind of stepping into the picture, but they're not quite sure is definitely they're on the outside but moving in then we thought well let's add some captions here and push it a little further because if you just leave the observers you don't really know much about them you know we don't know what's going on and so we added this caption do you know where we are and the other one says nope and that's also our way of saying hey real life isn't like this but wouldn't it be cool do, 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 So with that, I'd like to thank you again for tuning in, for listening to us, following us. You can always subscribe. They won't bother you with emails, but at least you'll have us at the top of your list when you go into YouTube. And thank you so much. We've enjoyed this tremendously. And I wish you all a happy week and goodbye for now. Mm -hmm.